Hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. Today we're going to pick back up on the story, Acts chapter 27. You might remember that yesterday, Paul's now been put on uh, an Egyptian ship from Alexandria headed for Rome. And so we're going to pick up in verse 7 of chapter 27. We had several days of slow sailing, and after great difficulty, we finally neared Snidus. But the wind was against us, so we sailed across to Crete, and along the sheltered coast of the island, past the Cape of Samon. We struggled along the coast and with great difficulty and finally arrived at Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. We had lost a lot of time. The weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall, and Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Men, he said, I believe there's trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger to our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. And since Fair Havens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew wanted to go on to Phoenix, farther up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a southwest and northwest exposure. So uh, Paul gives a warning, but I suspect they thought, oh, this preacher, religious man, what does he know? Well, I don't really know why Paul said this, uh, because if we, as we take this story forward, we're going to see that God was revealing things to Paul. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. The Bible isn't clear. Did God tell Paul this or was Paul just talking about what's reasonable and what's common sense because we recognize that no one really argued with Paul that it was too late in the season to travel they just had their own agendas you know the owners of the ship they didn't want to lose any more time because to them time was money they were trying to get a cargo to Rome mm -hmm. and then you know there were others on the ship that really didn't want to stay there any longer than they had to but whatever uh, the dynamics were that built this story uh, the the ship's captain is about to do something very unwise he's listening mm -hmm. to the wrong person mm -hmm. and, and God is setting something up here I, and I hope that we see this because if you go back to those trials that we looked at earlier in the book uh, Paul is on trial before these potentates you know uh, Felix and Festus and Agrippa and Bernice, but it isn't long before you see the script flip and these kings and potentates are on trial before Paul, mm. you know, because you have them trembling. You have them saying, some more convenient time I'll send for you and almost you persuade me to be a Christian. Uh, so it, 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 now we're going to see Paul is a prisoner on this ship, and yet he really is going to become the captain of the ship. That's true. Uh, not, not, not as far as title goes, and definitely not as far as pay goes, but <laughs> in, in regard to the person who is on the ship with the plan. And one more thing I would point out, and this is maybe just a little bit of housekeeping here with the scripture, but um, I, I don't want to get the wrong impression about the ship. This is a cargo ship. It's also a passenger ship. And Paul, as we saw earlier in the book of Acts, uh, Paul is a prisoner. We know that. We know he's on his way to Rome. The centurion just contracted with the ship's captain to carry these prisoners among the passengers. It's got to be a pretty good sized ship. I and mean, keep that in mind as we go forward, because later on we're going to find out there are 276 people on the ship. So it's a pretty, pretty good sized ship. But we are watching a story develop, and we'll see it unfold even more, where Paul is going to become the captain of the ship. It is amazing how that God flips the script so mm -hmm. many times. You know, we, we read about people that the world would have looked at as unimportant, and yet they become the heroes of the Bible. Dad, David keeping sheep, the youngest son of whom nothing is expected, so much so that when Jesse finds out that one of his sons is going to be anointed king. They leave David at home. Mary, a young woman that everybody would have passed by and thought she's just another peasant girl. But God saw her as something very different. And now, of course, I think for a long time, one of the most common names, if not the most common name for females in the Western world was Mary. In fact, that's your first yes. name, your mother's mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. You know, So that's just God's way of saying what the world counts as important. God sees things very differently. Yes, and so right now they're not really listening to Paul, but later on they're going to be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I did a series many, many years ago, and I can I couldn't lay my hands on it if I had to because I don't have the notes. I think it's before I started using a computer, and and I doubt I doubt we have any recordings of it. But I did a series called Earth Said, Heaven Said. You mm -hmm. know what the world said about this person, and what God 
uh, said about this person, and uh, I really enjoyed that series. It's a long time ago. I'm going to guess 92, 93, somewhere oh, back there. That has there. been a while. But I really enjoyed doing that series. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's and I think one of the things we can see here is um, for us in our day is to be faithful even when uh, even when things aren't going to go well. I mean, you know, um, God can still use us. Yeah. Well, I see that with Paul here, and again, you know, it's, we're just looking at the beginning, the setup of the story that's about to unfold, and we'll start unfolding it on Monday, but uh, this is really cool. I know, just in the message recently on First Wednesday, you were, you were giving people a warning, and we're, we're living in a time mm-hmm. where we need to be warning uh, people that the Lord's coming, and I mean, it, that's always, it's always the right time, but especially now that the days are getting closer. So um, the fact that we uh, are encouraging people to uh, pay attention and get their lives right with God before He comes um, might not get a great reception, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't continue to do it because God's going to use that message. Oh, that's so true. One more thing. Um, I'm just setting up stuff that we're going to come across. Watch how people empower, well, let's just say the centurion. Watch how the centurion is listening to Paul Mm -hmm. and watching Mm -hmm. Paul's advice and what's about to happen. Uh, because there's a big thing at the end of the story where the centurion steps in and saves Paul's life mm-hmm. because clearly he's been watching and listening yes. knowing this man is unusual here and it just reminds us all the time to just be a be a Christ follower just yes. live out the Christian life thank you I mean yeah. Paul's not pushing anybody around he's not his his speech as you can see here is very gracious is very polite um, he's just a respectful, Christian, godly man following Jesus in the midst of a, a broken situation, and his impact, his influence is going to be huge. In this right, story. and sometimes, like you said, the most powerful influence we have is how we live our life. And you just made me think about somebody that I know personally right now who's going through a really tough time. And she has a lot of relatives that are not believers. But I know they're watching her, mm-hmm. watching her strong faith, watching her calm demeanor, watching her patience as she endures. And that is a testimony right there for all of the uh, people that are watching. And so there's so many ways God gives us opportunity to represent Him as we're living out this life. And I think the way that God affirms what, yes. we, what we believe in the hearts and minds of others is important. I mean, when Paul, I mean, you've got to realize, Paul is a prisoner. And when he goes forward and he has the courage to talk to the captain and the officer in charge, I mean, I'm sure they said, who does this guy think he is? Mm -hmm. You know, he's a prisoner. I mean, he has no business giving us advice. At the end of the chapter, they're going to be hanging on every word. Absolutely. Things change. Things change. (laughs) Well, that's good. I like that. (laughs) We'll pray for us, Mary Alice. Yes, let's pray. Father, we're so thankful that we can have confidence in you even when we're into a storm. And help us to be a witness to those around us. Help us to live our lives in such a way that others can see Jesus in us, especially in difficult times. And I just pray that you would bless our Nose Window family today. I pray that you bless their marriages, their children, their grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Father, please watch over us as we go through the events of the day. Carry us through. Provide for us as we need provision, wisdom, finances, um, just guidance, healing, comfort, all those things, Father, we need, and you are our source of provision. And we're just going to be careful to give you the thanks for all these things. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Alice. Well, at New Spring, it's week two of Song for the Anxious Mind. Yes. And for all of us who deal with anxiety, which is all of us, all of us deal with some anxiety. Some of us deal with a lot of anxiety. I know it's going to be a really important, helpful week at New Spring. Yes, we hope to see you on campus or visit us online at newspring.org and you can watch live stream and we'll just be excited about seeing you again next week. That's right. We'll see you soon. God bless.